Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Well, my name is Dean Luis Reyes, and I'm here to tell you a story about how the Cuban cinema has changed in the last 20 years. And that change is a radical change. So what has happened in the past 20 years in the panorama of Cuban cinema has been a citizen revolution. Two features mark the evolution of Cuban cinema throughout the two centuries. The first, the redefinition of its institutionality after the emergence of a powerful audiovisual movement independent of the state apparatus. The second, the configuration of an intense activism on the part of the filmmaker which transformed them into production agents of a new type of citizenship that has forever modified the relations between filmmakers and the state in Cuba. Both features are manifest from events linked to the figure of Alfredo Guevara, a cultural official very close to Fidel Castro since the time of his university studies founder of the State Cuban Institute of Cinema, ICAIC, and its director for 32 years. Guevara resigned in March 2000 in front of ICAIC, and his replacement, the writer with no ties to cinema, Omar Gonzalez, inherits the panorama of a national cinema that is increasingly blurred a financial precariousness that made production rely mainly in co-productions during the deep economic crisis of the 1990s, the reduction of the state budget allocated to own projects and the resulting aesthetic exhaustion. Based in this panorama, the new direction of the ICAI convened the creation of the Young Filmmakers Showcase or Muestra Joven, La Muestra, in October of the same year. The meeting, which over time will become the largest national event after the International Latin American Film Festival of Havana, created in 1979, was also the launching pad for a new generation of young filmmakers who were described as new directors, but over time have ended up being grouped under the generic term of independent Cuban cinema. In 2005, Humberto Padron, a young Cuban filmmaker, directed the first feature film outside the ICAIC, financed directly and entirely with Cuban private capital. The, the owner of a famous restaurant in Havana, a group of friendly painters, and funds from the, own, from the director himself and the almost free participation of technicians and actors, made it possible fruits in the coffee or frutas en el café. This was the beginning of an intense and growing alternative film current that working outside the usual production centers in Cuba was breathing vitality into the local film culture. The qualification of independent cinema, highly questioned by the official press and institutional representatives, ended up prevailing. It's a description that although it does not fully, ex fully explain the works that it, it intends to label, it highlights the appearance of an unprecedented cultural field in Cuba in the second half of the, of the 20th century. These modes of production depend on a more diverse economic context and forms of management far removed from the criteria of the Cuban official culture. The culture of the short film was decisive for the independent production of the 2000s. The, the non-fiction film began to manifest itself as a field without visible 
visible unity. In the absence of a prescriptive debate that imposes one or more methods of approaching the themes, all styles and treatments coexist without denying each other. An outstanding, an outstanding mark from year 2006 was the emergence of a multitude of short films dedicated to the examination of controversi controversial aspects of the Cuban social reality, carrying out a kind of counter-information or para-journalism, these pieces gain significant prominence by revealing the disconnection between official discourse and daily life in Cuba. These features revitalize the testimonial dimension of the Cuban documentary. The expansive phenomenon of the documentary short film gave rise to a new journalism that used, that used the digital ca camera as an essential device to show evidence and denounce. Issues such as prostitution, censorship, bureaucracy, political dissent, and all kinds of ex exclusions could finally shown. This inclination to review the marginal subjectivities hardly attend for, to, for the Cuban audiovisual was complemented with the problematization of the popular subject. The common people return to the center of interest in national documentaries and the rediscovery of the censored cinema of Nicolas Guillén Landrian played a decisive role in this. The short film by these directors, Landrian Films, today considered one of the most important voices in Latin American nonfiction, were exhumed in the first edition of the Young, of, of the Young Filmmakers Showcase of Muestra Joven after being shelved in the 1970s. In 2010, the selection of two atypical and profoundly independent Cuban feature films within the official selection of the International Latin American Cine, uh, Film Festival of Havana, marked the coming of age of Cuban independent cinema. Molinas Feroz, one of, of, of these movies, is the first feature film by the Enfante Real of national independent production, Jorge Molina, with films that are obsessed with death, sex, desire, and the monstrosity. The second one of these movies is Miguel Coyula's Memories of, Over, of, More, Memories of Development, is a, a kind of retaking of issues left in suspense by Tomás Gutiérrez Alea in Mem Mem Memories of Underdevelopment, the classic of 1968, as well as a rereading of the legacy of the Cuban revolution and its utopian ideals from the nihilistic perspective of a generation that does not identify with many of its values. In 2001, in 2011, Alejandro Brugues, Juan de los Muertos, John of the Dead, the first Cuban zombie film was released. This is a national allegory that satirizes the social order of post-crisis Cuba in the 1990s. The authoritarian state model and the Cuban cinema. Young of the Dead won the Goya Award in Spain for Best Ibero-American Film and became the greatest global financial success of Cuban independent cinema. In this moment on, the mutation of the model of creation of local cinema became evident from its link with global tendencies of management and production. Young filmmakers and many new producers began to operate through funds and production grants from international festivals such as Rotterdam and Berlin and from multinational investments. In the 10-year period between 2009 and 2019, around 30 debut films were produced in Cuba, both inside and outside the Institute of Cinema, Institute of State Cinema, ICAIC, 
in a process of renewal of voices, but also of reinventing of the logic of creation. Hence, many of the recent productions have an orientation defined by dialogue with, with transnational environments of film production. However, by this time, the silent censorship that meant the non-distribution of many of these works inside Cuba, or their exhibition for a limited time in second-rate theaters, made it clear that a thriving phenomenon such as, such as independent cinema was badly accepted by the state. With the exception of very few features film, films acquired by the state national film distributor, the own, the Ikai same, same, most of the titles have almost no screen life. The situation came to the fore in 2016 when the Ikai leadership prohibit the exhibition in Cuba of the independent production Santa Andres, made by Carlos Lechua, was shown minutes ago in, in, in the room. The, 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 this decision was made despite the disagreement of a group of, of prestigious filmmakers called by the institute, by, by the, the same institute to assess the film. The censorship generated disagreement from from, from the critics to the Ministry of Culture and the Presidencies of Official Culture or Organization intervene, certifying the non-admission of the narrative thread where, where a dissident writer is repressed for his position, for, for his dissident position in front of the, of the, of the Fidel Castro regime. This episode is not an isolated event. In 2015, the filmmaker Juan Carlos Cremata suffered censorship for his staying of Eugene Ionesco play, The King Dies. Shortly after one of the shorts that would, that would, that would make up his feature film Crematorio, produced by Icaic, was vetted. The documentary filmmaker Eliezer Jimenez Almeida and his short film Persona, Person, as well as the feature film Nadie, Nobody, by Miguel Coyula, provoked reprisals from the political police against the filmmaker. Nobody's exhibition, for example, at an independent gal art gallery in Havana in 2017, ended with an spectacular police police operation to prevent guests from accessing the show. In 2019, the young, the young filmmaker showcase was again the center of a clash between creators and state officials. This time, after the inclusion in its contest of the documentary Sueños al Pairo, Dreams at Read, made by Jose Luis Aparicio and Fernando Fraguela, Made with this, produced with the support of the ACAIC, which revisits the events surrounding the Mariel Exodus in 1980, was censored. The state, but in this, but in this occasion, many of the filmmakers with films in competition in the Muestra, Hoven, in solidarity with those censors, withdrew their films from the show, from the Muestra. Given the boycott of the filmmakers and the attitude of rejecting the censorship, the meeting was suspended, a muestra, the muestra was suspended that year and also in 2020, on that occasion in invoking the health crisis due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Nor was Suman in 2021, neither this year. This situation, took place in the context of the strong debates that arose after the approval, after the approval in, 19, in 2018 of Decree 349, signed by Miguel Diaz Canel, appointed president by Raul Castro, which intends to put limits on independent creation in Cuba, and which generate opposition from artists, collectives, like the Movimiento San Isidro, which since, then, which since then has been under harassment by the repressive 
apparatus. The Decree 349 provoked condemnations from, from international organizations such as Amnesty International. In addition, the same year, Decree Law 370, Decreto 370, was adopted by virtue of which dozens of Cubans have been sanctioned for what they publish on Facebook and Twitter. During this period, the Cuban filmmaker, filmmakers were also involved in another citizen demand. Alfredo Guevara died in 2013, and a group of state officials were appointed to reform of the ICAI, with the presence of only two filmmakers. The reaction was that filmmakers decided to convene the filmmakers' assemblies, from which emerged a prestigious group later known as Group of 20 or Grupo de los 20, to represent the guild. The guild. Their main demand to the state since then was the enactment of a film law that would, that could, that would recognize, recognize the legal status of the independent creator as well as the strengthening of the participation of filmmakers in the decision making of the institute. In 2016, after the beginning of the diplomatic rapprochement between Washington and Havana, the production in Cuba of The Fate of the Furious the first Hollywood blockbuster in more than half a century with Cuba as a setting, it highlighted the fragility of the institutional environment in the face of the imminent opening of the island to global culture, cultural industries. However, the state response to the filmmakers, to the Cuban filmmaker, filmmakers' claims was slow. It's not until 2019 that as a result of these demands, Decree Law 373 is approved, which grants legal status to filmmakers outside the institutional umbrella and also established the Fund for the Promotion of Cuban Cinema and the Film Commissions. This is the only one provision of its kind achieved through the activism of an artistic guild in Cuba in the last 60 years. However, the regulatory functions of the ICAI, of the Institute of Cinema, in 373 have generated doubts and suspicions. Apart from, above, from the above, the Film Institute has less and less weight in the stylistic thematic aspects of the cinema in Cuba today. Meanwhile, the territory of non-fiction film has become the most risky scenario of today's Cuban audiovisual. A media voz, Heidi Hassan and Patricia Perez, a media voz. Um, that won the best feature film award at the ITFA, at the International Documentary Film Festival in Amsterdam, something unprecedented for national cinema. This feature film, which used autobiographical cinema and autofiction to wave its discourse around the experience of emigration and as a reinvention of one's own identity, directed by, by two International School of Cinema of Havana graduates, both residing in Europe, highlight the strength of the cinema of the Cuban diaspora, made by young filmmakers. Right now, titles like Days of December, made by Carla Valdez, Catherine Gavilan and Lisandra Lopez Fave Brower, The Origin of the Shadow, Brower, El Origen de la Sombra. Alejandro Alonso's The Project, El Proyecto. Marcel Beltrán's The Music of the Spheres. Luis Alejandro Llero, The Old Heralds. Alejandro Alonso and Alejandro Perez, Terra Nova. The later, the Amondo Tiger Award for Best Short in the Rotterdam Film Festival in 2021 shows the experimental will that pushed this second wave of Cuban independent filmmakers. Interest in the creation of an author cinema with 
no ties to the thematic and stylistic tendencies of traditional Cuban cinema. It's difficult to say what the national cinema will be like in the future. However, the first two decades of the 21st century have redrawn what is understood by Cuban cinema. Thank you very much for your attention. I have a question. Uh, if um, you have uh, you have sh sh talked about kind of three times in the cinema history in Cuba, like one after revolution, the one that was let's say um, produced by Kaik at the beginning of the revolution, then you talk about a first wave of independent cinema, if I'm correct. Yeah. And now this, that. the second wave. How uh, can you compare in terms of interest and thematics or, or approach to cinema, how these three um, periods, let's call it, of cinema in Cuba differ? Or? I think that differences are mainly stylistical, but there is a, um, there is a will in the, film, in the Cuban filmmakers to show the problems that relates to nationality, to identity, and to relation between artist and social milieu. I think the last one is, main, is mainly the, the most important thematic and stylistic feature that cross all this period, all these moments of history of Cuban cinema. Even now, when we are talking about audiovisual culture and not about only about Cuban cinema, we talk about Audio, audiovisual condition of Cuban cinema. We are always referring when we re review the, the production of, of the most interesting movies that um, young filmmakers are, are making right now has to do with identity and with, and, and with this, this issue that Tomás Gutiérrez Alea represents so, so good in Memories of Underdevelopment, there is the relationship between the people who, who see what's around him and that space of social uh, life mm, the, where, where he tries to express him. So um, I think there is a lot of features that relate one period and another. M maybe sometimes we try to, to refer only to differences, but I think it's really interesting to find the, the, the elements that lays one and another. Thank you. Thank you so much for this very interesting talk. I feel like I've learned a lot. Um, I'm very interested by the title of uh, the talk, it, Cuban Independent Cinema as Essay for the Public Square. And if, if I understood the trajectory that you mapped correctly, it seems that Icaic and other, well, especially Icaic necessarily because it's Cuba, but uh, organizations that are either representing film or independent filmmakers or the funding structures that support film and independent filmmakers seem to be an important part of the argument that you're building for what comprises an independent film public square. Yeah. Yes. And, and so 
uh, I guess I'm wondering if you might be willing, especially for someone like me, learning a lot about contemporary Cuban independent film from you today, maybe say a little bit more about these dynamics of representation in particular. You talked about Ikayek's changing like board and oversight and maybe the lack of filmmakers who participate. But I have to say to me, maybe an uninitiated uh, audience member for the contemporary Cuban cinema world, maybe a diverse and interdisciplinary group might seem more like a public square. So would you be willing to say a little bit more about these re relationships between both representation in terms of institutional support and also obviously it sounds like some of the financial support is an important part of this argument as well. Well, right now the, the Institute of Cinema um, has a very little um, budget to, to produce films, but maybe the, 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 the more interesting uh, issue is that they are how they are using that budget. Uh, last year, two years ago, they, they dedicated the budget of one year to the production of a period film about with the history of a general of the independent uh, revolution of independence of the 19th century, Cubans against Spain, which title is El Mayor. And it's a, it's a movie that answers to what we call the, the state demand. It's a kind of movie that politicals, political and Functionaries want to see, wants to see, but it's not the the, the movies that people mm, mainly prefers. I think that the showcase that that it's that it's right here is the representation of what is pushing the limits of the Cuban cinema in the last twenty years. Maybe the the, the, the selection of, of, of movies. That are that, that are showing here outside are um, the best representation of what is happening in the in the cinematic in the, in the cinematic culture of of, of Cuba right now. Um, for me, the, the main uh, problem is that those films are not shown. No, are not showing Cuba. There is no place where, where my American students, a student of cinema from Europe, asked me, where can I see that those movies in Cuba? I don't know where. This, the, states, the state institutions are not promoting these movies, are not promoting this, this, this cinema. Critics, Academics are trying to, to explain what is happening, but it's a hard work to do because in Cuba there is little information about what is happening outside the production, the state production. So independent production is more a, a thematic preoccupation of critics, uh, academics, and filmmakers. But not, but not, but, but not is, um, um, let's say, uh, the, the, uh, a duty of every day from the, the officials of the state in Cuba. That's really sad from my perspective. Absolutely sad and terrible too. Did I answer your maybe in some way? Sorry. Sorry. Um, I wanted to ask about the 373 law decree. What is it exactly and how is it affecting the production of or is it affecting the production of the independent cinema? Well, 373 affects essentially what what 
what we are projecting in, in public sphere in Cuba. State um, Communist Party in the last five years are trying to control the, um, the emission of opinions, of perspectives about society, about political problems, about economic problems in Cuban society using a very um, thick um, um, uh, legislative um, uh, spectrum that it's trying to to put uh, to, to choose the people and of course this has a, a, an extension to, to, to cultural expression and that's why there is a lot of activism movements inside Cuban society today that are discussing that attitude of the state. And in movies, we could see that, well, if we review Santa y Andres, Carlos Echuga, Santa y Andres, is a movie that is trying to reflect the repression of, of free expression in, in, in Cuban society using the story of a, a writer in the 70s, 80s, with, which is persecuted by what he, write, what, he, what, he, what he writes. And this is not fiction. It's based on the histories of a lot of Cuban artists that are being prosecuted in Cuba during decades for express something that is not good received by the state. So 373 and others um, laws in, inside Cuba in the last years are really a preoccupation for artists and for the society too, of course. The, are there movies in Cuba in the independent cinema that address the issue of activism, political prisoners, or any other poli directly political issues, or they, how is that managed? Um, not directly. If we consider uh, Plantados, an independent Cuban production, well, this is probably one of the first movies dedicated to, the, to that um, problem, but we have, we have uh, in, in documentary, in, in non-fiction film tradition, Cuban tradition, we have um, movies made by Orlando Jimenez Leal mainly. In nobody listened, nadie escuchaba. And other movies that are treat that problem. Eliezer Jimenez Almeida made some months ago a movie dedicated to the people who participate in the invasion of Bahia de Cochinos, um, which story is not tell because um, the narrative that we know about, the, about that, that uh, moment of, of the history of Cuba is the, is the story of, of Fidel Castro, it's the story of the state. And there are a lot of narratives of, of that kind that that are waiting to be shown. Right now, there is some, at least I, I know, three productions in progress about the civic revolution that is taking place in Cuba in the last two, three years. Are two, I, I know about three medium, long feature Mm, non-fiction films that are in production referring to that to that uh, mm, so, uh, to, to that moment of, 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 of the last years of, of, of Cuban history so it's a it's an signature that we have to to, to front to affront I know Recently, a lot of filmmakers have left Cuba. Yeah. And now it seems like the, a lot of the good 
uh, independent art filmmakers have left Cuba, at least like a, one generation. How do, do you think that their training as independent artists in Cuba will help them to continue? What is your, if you could predict what could happen with the Cuba independent cinema of this last second generation? We're mostly are out. It's difficult to say because right now in Cuba we are we are confronting the worst exodus of the last 60 years. In the from October of the last year till May, till last May, there were. 140,000 Cubans entered only the, the, the United States. So film, filmmakers are a part of this exodus. And I don't know what's going to happen. I think that what's going to, that, that, that what, what, what is, what is, mm, mm, going to change definitely is the Cuban society. I don't know how, but there is a, a, a kind of consensus about the necessity to change the socio-political situation in Cuba, that we have to confront the authorities. And this is part of the, of the activism that we are seeing right now. And for me, the most important part of that panorama is that the filmmakers that are situating, situating their, their, their home outside Cuba still think in Cuba, still representing Cuba, still filming about Cuba, still telling stories about Cuba. That's why I mentioned in my, in my piece uh, the the diaspora cinema. Right now we have a diaspora th cinema, a Cuban diaspora cinema that is um, that is a, establishing a dialogue with the nation, with the island. The nation is something bigger, of course, but um, they are still looking at the island, looking at the at the country. There is no the same situation of the, of the old generation of, polit of, of filmmakers that left Cuba saying goodbye, I don't know if I will see you again. Right now there is another condition. We have the social media, we have the, the internet, we have different ways to to keep on touch of what is happening in the in the island, so um, I don't know what's going what's going to happen with with Cuban cinema, but but I'm sure that in the last 20 years, what is right, what is what we could now call the most important part of uh, of um, cinematic Cuban culture in Cuba is being made by the young filmmakers. That's for me is definitely, and it's really important because when maybe around 2001, 2002, we we saw the first films of these mm, filmmakers, we say mm, maybe it, it could happen something, and now really happened. So I don't know what's going to happen. I think that Cuba has to change. And we all are part of this change. Thank you. I, I, think, um, I think this is maybe why I was interested in the focus on Ikaik and the structure of that more official entity initially, because it does seem that the, will it help if I go up here, the sound? Um, because it, it seems like a lot of what you're describing as the, the public sphere version of independent Cuban cinema 
is diasporic film or film that's happening outside of those official entities. So, yeah. So, so um, is it possible to have a public sphere of the kind, a public square of the kind that you're describing within these official entities? Or is, is the argument mostly that independent Cuban cinema that, that interests you and that is operating in this way is really not happening there and one has to look outside of it? That it's, is, is that sort of the core argument that we're driving at here? Or is there a possibility mm. for something else to happen? Mm. Well, the, when I when I when I talk about in my in my, in my text when I talk about the um, Grupo de los Vente and the the demanding of a law of cinema cinema law in, in Cuba this is an example of what could change inside Cuba I think that activism inside Cuba from the, the groups of artists is decisive to change the, the, the panorama, to change, the, to, change, to change things. And for me, the most important is, 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 that, is that filmmakers are, the, the ex, the, are ex, exemplary, representing what we could change. This state it takes time, this takes a lot of discussions with authorities and creating a consensus to decide what to change. But I think that exactly filmmakers are the example that we could change things inside Cuba. They finally don't obtain the 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 lay the scene they obtain a consideration of the of the authorities that finally recognize legally the independent cuban filmmaker right right now they could have they they could made a, 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 a agreement with another production stances, they could pay salaries, they could do something that years before it was prohibited. And thus was made pushing the limits. And that was made organizing them, creating a, 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 the strength to push the limits. So um, I think that we could change a lot of a lot of 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 of, 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 of things inside Cuba. We are um, from outside. We are we are thinking possibilities. We are thinking in other ways, but the main work it, it has to be do inside Cuba. So that's part of the problem that we have right now. The, for me, the 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 the, the, the diasporic cinema is maybe is sending letters to Cuba. The, the movies are arriving uh, using USB, USB drives, using the net, uh, using festivals that are, are organized by Instar, which made a terrific fes festival of the virtual fe cine cine cinema festival last December. And a lot of people inside Cuba could finally see movies that are censored in Cuba, which mm, filmmakers are under persecution, even. So I think that we have a lot of a lot of mm, tools to break the that limits. So right now there is an, an open possibility to create a new kind of social conscience that empowered the Cuban, the Cubans inside, inside the country and outside the country. 
So there is a lot of work to do, but when, when I look two years ago and return back to right now, I see how many things we had changed. So why not more that, of that? Yes? nation that has, um, you know, censorship. Yeah, Cuba is not the only nation with censorship. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we we lived in, in Shanghai, and um, there were lots and lots of films made by Chinese in a clandestine way, and they were actually shown in Shanghai by a German person who had this secret film theater where we had to go. I was telling Tanya we had to walk through little, um, you know, all hidden and actually rather dangerous. But the films were moved around within, within China. And my question to you is, is there any such effort in Havana, for example? Yes. That, yeah, okay. I, I, ca I, I, could tell it, I, I could tell you uh, the place where you could see um, in, during two nights, Every month, in the how you say kanchen? How you say kanchen? Yeah, in a kanchen field, in, in a field, in a field, yeah, in, in a the tent. tennis field yeah. of Norwegian Embassy in Havana. I see. Mm -hmm. That's the, the that's maybe the only place I know. Do you know another one? No, no. Ah well, uh, the yeah the the place for, of of the uh, uh, of the a theater troupe in Havana. They are showing those films too. But there, there is a lot of cinemas in Cuba. There is a lot of places to show films. And um, all those places are administrated by the state. And they are not showing that films. The independent cinema are shown in those places that I tell you. And that's really sad. We, of course, for example, Santa Andres has never has a, an, a, an exhibition, a public exhibition in Cuba, not even in the school of cinema. I have, as a critic and as a friend of the filmmaker, I, I has to, I has, I had to 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 see Santa Andres in the in the who is dormitorio. Well, in the house of the of the filmmaker, he has to he has to call me by he ha, he phoned me, hey, uh, why don't you come here and we have some beer, and I know that was a password because he was under surveillance by political police. Huh? Sorry. Yes, and um, and um, with the with surveillance in, in his house too. So I pay a visit to him. Hey, how are you? Come, come with me, put the TV, close the door. You can see my film. After that, two, one year and a half after that, we show that film at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Thanks to Tanya who organized the, that, that muestra that we made there. It was censored cinema from Cuba that we, would, we were showing there. And when I present the, 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 the room full of packed of people watching the movie, applauding uh, when start to 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 appear the the credits i i said to me why can we have something like this in cuba why could we not do something like this in havana well that's the situation we have we are showing here in document they are inside yeah Santa Andres was shown this mo this morning, right now, right here. Okay. 
participate. Thank you very much for being here. You're really kind. Thank you.